Hi, Nigel here with my day three of vlogging. Today we're going to have a look at how you might use audio interfaces to replace screen time. Now to minimize my screen use, I've found a chess application that runs on the iPhone, but you don't actually use the iPhone screen because it's completely voice activated and gives voice annotations of the game. It's designed for visually impaired people, but can also be used uh, if you don't want to actually be involved with the screen itself. So I've set up my chess set and we'll give it a try. Hey Siri. Open Jabba Chess. To activate it, I just have to keep swiping on the iPhone surface to tell it that I'm ready to give a command. It will say that it's listening. I'll give a command, it'll give a response, then we'll work through the game like that. Listening. New game with white. Done listening. Game ready. E4. E4. Done listening. White move D4. Black move D5. Knight to F3. Listening. Knight F3. Done listening. White move Knight F3. Knight D4. Done listening. White move knight D4. Black moved queen takes D4. I'll claim my poor playing is due to distracting of the new system, so I'll try another game later on. Now I'm going to have a look at this book, uh, Feast of Ice and Fire, which is a cookbook, an official companion cookbook of the Game of Thrones, which is the Fox uh, very popular series. And what it's dealing with is what they were actually eating in the medieval period. Now George Martin's got a very good reputation of studying the times that he's writing about but he does admit that he needed some help to actually nut out exactly what they would have been eating at the time. And I'll write down some what I need to get at the shops and I'll try and find the simplest thing that I can start practicing cooking with. Now if you have a look at how the book's laid out, you see that it talks about generally how the medieval kitchen was stocked, a bit of the basics of the foods that they used to build their diets upon, it talks about the different areas in Game of Thrones and then they do the recipes by region. So there's the Wall, the North, the South, King's Landing, Dawn and across the sea. And then a thing about feasting in style. So I'll have a look, skip over the introduction, which is actually by George Martin. So it, it is in itself an interesting read. So when we come to the part about stocking a medieval kitchen, it talks about how the beefs we have now, or the meats we have now, and the different savouries, and the different uh, ways of seasoning our food are different from then. So what they're talking about in terms of substitution is where they talk about goat, you might like to, have, to use lamb. When they talk about pigeon, you can have duck or some other dark meat poultry. And they actually have a, a bovine species, species Aurox, if I'm A-U-R-O-C-H-S, if I'm pronouncing that properly, and that can be replaced by beef, but it's a now extinct uh, bovine or cow species. Also, some of the different spices are not exactly the same as we have now. But it's interesting that to me that the uh, medieval diet was really quite spicy and flavoursome. So the next section it goes through the basics. So it's talking about, for example, uh, this one called the sweet powder. 
which is a common medieval spice mix. Other things it's talking about is a strong powder, stronger spice mix, medieval black pepper sauce, uh, a butter sauce, Elizabethan butter sauce in this case. So what they've done is to try and go back and find authentic older recipes, not necessarily all from exactly the same period, but they have tried to capture what it was really like at the time. So for example, medieval sauce for fish, medieval pastry dough, and now it comes to the more Game of Thrones specific things, and it talks about the cuisine in the different regions. And this is really based on the characteristics of that region and what sort of medieval diet would uh, match that sort of region. And now it goes through the different regions with a summary. So for example, for the wall, it talks about what they might have for breakfast, apple cakes, buns and raisins, pine nuts and apple, crusty white bread, what they might have a salad at Castle Black, mutton in an ale onion broth, well, that sounds pretty good, bean and bacon soup, pork pie, peas portridge, rack of lamb, iced blueberries in sweet cream, and mulled wine. So that's pretty characteristic of a, what you might call a colder climate mix. So if we have a look at another one of the areas, and for example, this is a section on mulled wine. So when it's talking about mulled wine, as used in the war, it talks about the medieval mulled wine, uh, a different approach to mulled wine. So you can see that uh, there's often a few recipes in each category. Next we have a look at what they have in the north. It talks about breakfast at Winterfell, which is oat cakes with a cold fruit soup, onions and gravy, buttered beets, turnips and butter, beef and bacon pie, oryx roasted with leeks, so that's that uh, beef roasted with leeks, honey chicken and baked apples. So let's have a look at breakfast. They have a quote from Game of Thrones. There was much more than Caitlin asked for. Hot bread, butter and honey and blackberry preserves. A rasher of bacon and a soft boiled egg. A wedge of cheese, a pot of mint tea and with it came Meister Lewin. So you can see by reading the book you get a lot more detail than you actually would get just by watching the television series itself. So this is uh, Breakfast for Two. Preparation five minutes plus eggs for five minutes. So it also goes well with what they've described as a crusty white bread that they do on page 25 and apple cakes and some cold fresh milk. Then they also talk about oat cakes, which people had early in the morning. So for example, from again, a quote from the sword, Storm of Swords book of the Game of Thrones. When they woke the next morning, the fire had gone out and little was gone, but he'd left a sausage for them and a dozen oat cakes folded neatly in a green and white cloth. Some of the cakes had pine nuts baked in them and some had blackberries. Bran ate one of each and still did not know which he liked the best. So it goes into specific parts of the Game of Thrones and recreates the menus associated with that. Next we can have a look at the south for example, uh, black bread and leek soup, sister stew, broth of seaweed and clams, stewed rabbit, trout wrapped in bacon, snitched tarts, blackberry uh, blueberry tarts, poached pears, cream swans uh, and honey biscuits. And you can see the, the cream swans were actually quite a delicate little thing to make. I thought it was interesting that even in the medieval times, uh, maybe you might expect it, but they did have little flourishes with their food. And as an example of honey biscuits, not only do they do the medieval honey biscuits, but they also talk about modern honey biscuits. And part of the reason for having these two different options is that sometimes the medieval food might be considered quite spicy by today's standards, uh, and you might actually prefer the more modern 
honey biscuits which are more uh, suited to our education of our tastes. And so as an example of where they get the recipes from, here's a quote for the honeyed biscuits, a recipe from the 14th century. So I'll go through this and find something nice to cook. Now I've decided to go with a meal from the north, and in particular I'm going to have onions in gravy, along with the beef roasted with leeks, although not as rare as that. And then for dessert, I decided to go with the 7th century baked apples. So I've got my shopping list on a piece of paper, so I'll take that to the shop with me and uh, cook another day. Hi, well that's been day three of my vlog. I've looked at the Game of Thrones cookbook and chosen something from there that I'll cook another day. And then I've also worked out how to do chess without having to look at the screen all the time on my iPhone. So thank you for watching this and you can subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe button and then also clicking the little bell and you'll get a notification of my vlogs. So see you another day. Bye for now.